Alrighty, so uh, this is the 1070, the EVGA Hybrid 1070 that I had in the i5 uh, CS2 gaming PC. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we are looking at some components. Mainly we're going to be looking at these components here, which are shunt mods for our power limiter reader it's more or less a power control right here that is your power control on a 1070 uh, for the EVGA models uh, the other models would be different as in location they could be located up here somewhere higher or over on the other side of the board EVGA put it over here because of the power connectors that are this way over here so that way that when it gets the power it can go over to well I can go through a couple phases first and then to a power meter here which will be our uh, limiter so if you go into like an MSI afterburner and you see the power limit well this will completely make it so it does you can put it to zero and it will still pump out more than what you can do really because uh, EVG, well, not EVGA, sorry, and uh, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA made it so the power limiter and, okay, so hmm, I don't know, how can I explain this? So shunt mod in this power limiter, it's a power controller right here. So shunting it, I shunted it with uh, two, two ohms. I believe these are two R2s, which are uh, a, a type of two ohm shunt resistors. Uh, it's not recommended if you're going to do this. It is not recommended to even do this, but it's not recommended to use this because of uh, some motherboards, all three. So all three, if you do all three of them, the power will come from the PCI Express as well, and that will also make it so it reads very little power draw from it. So if you do overclock this, say, with a core voltage mod, which I do believe the pads are going to be over here somewhere. Do we, have a, do we have a view for that? Yeah, yeah, we have a view for that. All right, yeah, I believe the... Uh, contact pads I'm gonna have to solder some wires to or somewhere over here but I am going to have to recheck it could be higher up on the board here which I'm not sure because I did not search it up yet because I'm only just testing the no power limit mod uh, the core voltage you might have to solder wire to one of these smaller contact pads not these ones here but the inside beside the actual control for the core voltage then I'd need like a uh, potentiometer in that just to hook up to it and then you can adjust the core voltage to yourself but without a power limit uh, that uh, is a really good option without power limit oh, these cards can go crazy like 2300 uh, 2.3 gigahertz no problem uh, I'm hoping to do 2200 no problem with just doing the power limit mod yep so I'm just I just did the power limit mod. I did it on all three uh, it's not really recommended if you do this to do it to all three because of the PCI Express I do have a motherboard that puts out way more it puts out double it, it can put out double the watts of a normal weather motherboard in the PCI Express slot um, normally you can do about 75 75 just fine uh, for most motherboards uh, mine can easily do 150 watts over the, just the PCI Express and that is only because my motherboard can handle it and which is actually what's on here which is the uh, Z690 Ors Master they are a very beefy motherboard if you guys would like to search it up go ahead um, but yeah, this, this 1070 is ready to go in. A lot of people think that the power mods are these uh, R005s. Uh, no, those are big compared to what you actually have to solder on. Uh, what you have to solder on are just these tiny little guys here. And normally you would just put it on two, so that way it would just come out of um, the power that comes from your 
uh, power pins, which are your PCI Express power pins that you plug in from your power supply, would go and it travels to these shunts. These two shunts usually. I do believe this third one is the PCI Express. I did do this a few hours ago and actually if you can see it's pretty quick but it's everything's solid everything's good they basically lift up the board and nothing falls off no problem nice and stable but again you're just gonna normally put on these two here on the EVGA models which are the two PCI Express powers the power goes to these and it shunts mod them to go into there to make it read that it's only reading I think it makes it good. To, it's going to read basically, if I did the math correctly, it's only going to read maybe a couple watts, maybe up to seven watts under load or 10 watts under load through the PCI Express and the, uh, through the PCI Express power connectors and the PCI Express to the motherboard, it should read about three to five watts if my math is correct on that. And that is what I'm hoping because I would like this to have as little power limit as I can for when I do the core voltage mod so when I put this instead of it being on the uh, hybrid I will be putting it on either a custom water cooled that is uh, a chilled or I will be doing either chilled ice or liquid nitrogen depending on how I'm feeling with this card but uh, let's get the test done. Uh, let's yeah, let's get the test done. Let's plug the fan in, get everything good to go. Uh, th another concern that some people might have is I don't know if I can show it. Yep, yeah, I can. Are the uh, the VRMs? So these are EVGA does an amazing job usually on their cards for the VRMs and all that. So I'll just move that so you can see everything better. All right, just to clarify, because uh, apparently my pencil was out of frame there. I was scrolling up and down by those black pads there. Those black pads are the VRMs. And EVGA does use some pretty beefy ones on their GTX 1070. Like uh, copper pieces that I normally would put on them. But from what I read, even if I core voltage mod this, these VRMs are going to be nice and cool. Nice and cool. I will be checking out the temperatures, though, and... I will let everyone know. But again, this is your power limiter controller. So without the shunt mods, you can only go so far. And it will, with the uh, core voltage mods, you can go as far as you want on the core. The memory, I do believe the memory is around here somewhere. I can't find it. Oh, mem so the memory might be actually on the back of the board on this one, so I can't show it. That's okay, but you can do the core voltage mod, the power limit mod, and then the memory mod, which is the same thing that you're going to do with the core, which is put a potentiometer onto it after finding the actual um, pads for it, which are very, very small and very difficult. So that's what I'm hoping to do eventually, but uh, let's get this card back in the i5 system and see if we can uh, either get the high settings it's not going to do anything for the low settings due to the i5 just it's not going to be able to do anything but for the higher settings I am hoping it's going to pump out at least 10 more frames uh, and if it is pumping out more than that I will test very high and see if we can get above 60 frames on the lows if we can get above 60 frame on the lows that's all I care about in these tests just to make it so everyone can have a somewhat competitive gaming PC on a 60 hertz monitor because you do not have to spend the most of the most but yeah let's get this thing going all right we got the fan all plugged back in let's get this test going so yeah if you look at the watts here everything's <laughs> very low which means the uh, shunt mods are working the temperature looks okay. Hotspot of 41.2. That's can't complain. Uh, the power limit right there is not gonna work anymore. Remember that. And I'm probably gonna have to raise the temp limit 
and crank on the fan which should help out the uh, cooling for the not the memory because the memory is cooled actually by the AIO as well but it should turn everything the pump the fan everything up higher hopefully keeping the temperature down I do want to see what the wattage is on load my math is saying everything should be uh, the GPU full load should be about 15 maybe 20 watts on full load and uh, that's what I want to see so when I put the core voltage mod on it I can raise the core voltage and the memory voltage whenever I do that one but core voltage is first um, whenever I do the core voltage I want to see how high the wattage will get on that I can do some math and figure out the exact amount of uh, wattage I am using or pulling on the GTX 1070 again this is the uh, EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 so it does have two power connectors there so it will be able to well, I'm hoping I'm hoping this thing can put in at least 1.4 core volts that's what I'm hoping to go to to be honest if I can go higher I would have to do probably liquid nitrogen or even some uh, dry ice maybe but uh, we'll see about 1.35 1.4 volts on the core we're hoping to see some wattage go up uh, I'm gonna figure out the math on how much it's drawing on idle right now and then I'm gonna run a test see how much it's actually drawing I will not be using uh, CSGO for my tests I will be using uh, Benchmate and I'll be running through some GPU benchmarks for uh, hardware bot so I can put in some records because I need some records for 1070. Alright, that's it, and uh, don't forget to get her done.